Here we have 9.6 graphing a cubic function of the form y equals ax cubed. So in order for us to graph this, we need to understand what a regular cube looks like. What does y equal just x cubed look like? So if I create a table, if I cube negative 2, I get negative 8. If I cube negative 1, I get negative 1. Cube 0, we get 0. Cube 1, we get 1. Cube 2, we get 8. And so if I draw these points on here, 1, 2, I get this point here, and here I get this point, 0, 0, 1, 2, I get 1 and 1 and 2 and 8. So drawing a line is not going to get it through those other points. So it does have to be a curve going this way and then a curve going this way. And so to me it kind of looks like a chair that you would slide off of, right? It's got this little curve, but it's not like straight enough for you to be able to sit on this chair. Um, but to me, it, it kind of looks like a chair. But it's just a little wiggle, like you've got one arm up and you've got the other arm down, right? Um, and it's kind of doing a little turn here as far as concavity. We'll learn more about that in calculus, but anyway. Um, so that's the basic graph. So it's got to have this kind of shape. Now, if these points are lifted up more or down more, then it could possibly look like this, right? If this one gets pulled down further, that one gets pulled up further, the center still being here, those points still being way out there. Um, your graph could look like this if you took this right hand point and pulled it up, or you took that left hand point and pulled it down. Um, you could also pull them closer to each other, and when you do that, the graph might um, do this and this. I look a little bit more flat, like a chair you might actually be able to sit on, right? Um, you could also have a number that is negative in the front there, and if it's negative in the front, if it's positive, it'll have that same shape. Left arm goes up, right arm goes down. But when it's negative, what happens is it flips everything over. And so then the left arm goes down and the right arm goes up. Okay. And so it's possible to have a graph that looks like this. The number in the neck. Oh, wrong way. Just graph the same thing. Oh, I graphed that wrong. Actually, this is the negative one. That's what the negative one will look like. But I graphed these points wrong. The points should have been negative two and negative eight. So negative two and negative eight. And you probably caught that earlier in the video. I didn't, sorry. Um, and then negative one, negative one, and then zero, zero, and then one, one, and then two, eight. So the wiggle should, or the curve should have been there and the curve should have been here. So that is what the graph of a positive x cubed looks like. This is the graph that matches the points that I just found. Then if that number in the front were negative, it would look the opposite. So positive means it should go up in the positive direction, down in the negative direction. If the number is negative in the front, then it does the opposite. So it goes down in the positive direction, okay? Um, and so that's really the idea behind, or the basic information about an X cubed. So we need to understand what the main shape looks like, which is this shape. And then we need to understand that if it's positive in the front, it's gonna go up to the right and down to the left. If it's negative in the front, it's gonna switch it, right? So, we also need to know how to find that center. And in order to get the center, you have to set your base equal to zero to find the center. Just like we've been doing before, okay? And it might seem silly as to why I'm doing that now, but as these problems start getting more and more complicated, you'll realize why I am always taking the base equal to zero. And it's 
better to condition you to do it from the very beginning than to all of a sudden throw it in there and then people are confused as to why they're doing that on that particular problem and they didn't do that on the previous problems. On the previous problems, it's not necessary. This example is one of those. It's not necessary. I could just say the center is zero, but I want to show you why the center is zero. And then that way when the center is not zero, you can understand why it is not zero a little bit better, okay? So here, again, this is just a coefficient. So my base here is actually um, just the x. And if I set it equal to zero, I get zero. So that is going to be my center of this graph, zero. Then I'm going to pick two points to the left and two points to the right. And then I'm going to plug them each into this equation. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So if I have negative 3 fourths times negative 8, I get 6. And then negative 3 fourths times when I cube negative 1, I get negative 1. Or you can do negative 1 cubed just like that to find the answer so you don't even have to think about it. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in delete and 0. So I get 0. Go back up there, click in 1, hit enter. I get negative 3 fourths. Go back up to highlight, oops, the last thing I entered, hit enter to copy. And then use my arrows to edit it to a 2. And then hit enter. I get negative 6. So because of the problems are fractions, you're probably going to have to hit that icon that has a little X in it. So that way you can input the answer negative 1 and then 3 fourths. And the same thing with this one. You hit that icon with a little X and then you type in positive 1 and negative 3 fourths. So that way when you, um, you don't have to try to eyeball where it's going to go. It'll just plot it there for you. These, you can use that graphing icon to plot these three points as well, or you can just eyeball them because they are pretty um, standard numbers, so just integers. So if I graph this on paper, because I'm not in Alex in this video, so negative 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is here. Um, oh, negative 2 and, and positive 6 is there. And then negative 1 and positive 3 fourths is about right here. 0 and 0. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that one's probably about right there. And then this one is down here. And so you notice that the curve goes down on the positive x side. So over here on the positive x side, it's going down. And why is that? That is because the coefficient in the front was negative. So the coefficient in the front tells me if it's positive, if it were just regular 3 fourths, I know that this arm would be going up. But because it's negative 3 fourths, that's why the arm is going downward. And then the left arm has to do the opposite for a cube function. So mine should have had this kind of shape. And it does. So everything is matching up. So I can draw those points in the computer. And then I can um, plot the graph function and if it doesn't look like this on my computer I know one of my points is off so reevaluate everything or do the whole problem all over again so that you can get the correct answer before getting marked wrong and getting some credit taken away